This Rev3 Games preview is brought to you by lynda.com. Other than getting my hands on Titanfall here at this event, I also had the opportunity to interview Vince Sampella. He's the founder and the CEO of Respawn Entertainment. He's probably best known for starting Infinity Ward, which made the Call of Duty series, which defined multiplayer for the last generation. We had a chance to chat and find out if he can do the same with Titanfall. It's my great pleasure to be joined by the CEO of Respond Entertainment, Vince Sampella. Thank you so much for your time. Of course. Um, so here we are, sort of getting close. I don't want to say the eve, but you know, with the, with the imminent release of, of Titanfall out there. Um, you've been working on the game for quite some time with Respond, and I thought, I don't think I've gotten a chance to ask you this, what was the thinking to go for sort of this as a premise? You know, obviously your background in more, for lack of a better word, realistic military shooters to go to something that is definitely more fanciful. You know, I would say we sat down, you know, we formed the company, we got, uh, got a lot of good, talented employees, we sat around and, and we didn't have the idea of what this is what we're going for. It was, let's get all these talented people to put their ideas out on the table and see what floated to the top. Um, there, as you can imagine, there wasn't a clear consensus. There was a lot of people vying for, for different things. So at the end of the day, it came down to what felt the most right. So we had a lot of prototypes that we, that we did. We kind of put out some different ideas and, uh, and saw what was the most fun. And we ended up you know, settling on this, especially after Joel created the Titans and we saw what they, you know, what they could be and that kind of big versus small and the, the duality of what we could do in there. It just it felt right. And obviously you've been sort of right there in pace with the evolution of online multiplayer, going back to Medal of Honor, Allied Assault, that, you know, what, what is the core element that has to be there in a shooter? And sort of what have you, how have you seen it evolve over the past decade? You know, I think it's, it's uh, in some ways, I think, you know, we've been lucky we've come out at the right time, you know. Uh, I think, though, what has to be there is kind of that connectivity, that, that feel where it just, you know, things feel good. It has to feel like you're, you're not bouncing around. You're not, you know, it's like you're in control. Things are believable. Things are connected. You have, there has to be enough there to keep you in the game, you know, things that, you know, unlock over time or, or just, you know, progression that keeps you kind of engaged, I think. And of course, like when it first started out, there was just the novelty of sort of playing against other people and not having, you know, the more traditional game experience, which is AI-controlled, uh, you know, enemies out there. When, when the idea of like bringing in that, that reward system, do, do you see that as kind of like the next shift in the evolution of, of multiplayer? You know, I don't know that it necessarily works for every game. I think it works for ours really well. It's kind of that balance of, you know, there's Titans, there's pilots, there's AI, and the way all of those work in the game, in our levels, the way it's kind of structured to keep, you know, we have that verticality now where people want to be off the ground, so there's these things on the ground that when you're down there, they, they, they might bother you or annoy you, but you can take them out and they have a benefit if you do, but you can kind of get above the ground and get away from them. So it just, in the play of how our levels flow and work, it fits really nicely and it's really fun. And, and you know, I, I think what's fascinating about this game is, you know, the, the Titans are right there. They're front and center. You know, it's, 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 it's a great hook. But there's already stuff that you're doing with the gameplay that is new, with, with the parkour, with the jetpacks. I mean, was, was, was that something you knew you wanted to try to take on from the outset? Or by putting the Titans in there, you need to kind of up the ante with the on-foot gameplay? You know, I think it's something that we always wanted to get in there once we kind of settled on the concept. It was that, you know, taking it to the next level and having that, you know, you can... You know, you can flank from above now, not just from the side. So it, that, that was, you know, once we kind of set out to do that, it was really important and we really pushed real hard and, and did a lot of work. And there was times where it just, you know, it wasn't, wasn't clicking properly and, and there was people on the team that just really pushed and said, you know, no, we have to have this and, and we, we made it work right and, and it came out really well. And then, you know, by, by having that gameplay element and, you know, very, very large Titans in as well, I mean, how, how does that change the approach to level design? I mean, do you, you have to think that everything has to be bigger, that there has to be more space, that the roads need to be wider? Um, not necessarily levels have to be that much bigger, but there has to be areas, you know, where Titans can go and roam freely without getting hung up. But there's also areas where only pilots can go. So it's kind of that building this level within a level and how do those two interact with each other because there's places where Titans can peek in and, and take out pilots. You know, when they're inside these levels, there's places where the pilots might be safe from Titans but not from other pilots. So it's, it's really, it adds another dimension to what can, what can the level do? What, how can you approach it? 
And, you know, I, 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 I have to go back to this. I, I find so fascinating about this game is, you know, you, of, of all people, are so associated with sort of the military shooter, you know, Call of Duty, obviously Medal of Honor. And the decision to really, I mean, it, it, it established multiplayer for the, for, for the last generation. And your guys' decision to, to, to move in this direction, I, I can't help but read that as kind of a broader statement than something just that Respawn chose to do. Do you think that we need to start thinking about multiplayer in new and different ways? You know, setting-wise, I, I don't know that, you know, I, I still like military shooters, so mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with them. Um, for us, it was definitely about, okay, we've done that for a long time. As Respawn now, you know, for me, it was, I want to do something a little different. You know, let's change it up. Obviously, you know, we're not going to make a puzzle game, you know, right coming out of that. <laughs> we, we have a, a core competency within our team that we want to really capture. But at the same time, it was, what can we do to expand the bounds? Make it familiar, yet something that people will look at and go, okay, this is fun. This is natural, but it's fun, and it takes it to another level, and, and it's engaging, and, and that's, you know, that's what it was about. And then what's, 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 what's kind of the core, of, the core philosophy of Respawn and how that kind of plays into the game? I mean, the, the company has been around four years, am I correct in thinking that? Three and a half about. Three yeah, and a half maybe years. a little bit more. When, when, when you started at the company, you didn't even know what the game was. I mean, what's, what, what are kind of those core values that you know, most players can start to identify when they sit down and play Titanfall? I mean, I would say for us it's about control and feel and and it has to feel good, it has to feel right, that's the most important thing because this is a game, it's about gameplay, it's about what, you know, what feels right. You know, our our uh, logo is a Braille R. We did that because it has to feel, it's the feeling, it's, you know, so that kind of all ties into to how we, we approach it. And, you know, so, I mean, in the process of, of getting Titanfall to feel good, I mean, you know, I, I guess it's funny, I've never thought, like, what, what makes a mech feel really good, but, you know, it, it clearly does in playing this game. I mean, what's, what's kind of the, the process and the patience required to, you know, work on something and kind of get to that sweet spot? Ooh, it's, uh, it takes a while. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot of patience and a lot of tweaking and a lot of iteration and testing, and, you know, we kind of do that all the time. A lot of the team plays the game, you know, almost every day. It's about giving comments and being open to hearing those comments from everybody and, and what feels right. And, you know, there's always an argument. You know, it's not an easy process because, you know, person A thinks this, person B thinks this, what do you do? Well, you have to, at the end of the day, you know, we have to decide what's the most fun, what's going to be the most accessible, and that's what we go with. And, 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 and the game has quite a bit of spectacle to it. You know, even like when, when you're on foot and you see the Titans over there, they're just fighting another group of, 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 of players. I mean, there's, there's, there's something you sort of take in that I don't think I've seen in a multiplayer game before. I mean, was, was, was that something that you guys kind of envisioned from the outset that, there's just a level of spectacle to watch this game play out that's very distinct from a Call of Duty, from a Medal of Honor, or many of the traditional games out there. We definitely, we kind of made the decision that, you know, we want to put that cinematic single player element into the game. So, you know, some of that is just going to be from, you know, watching two giant titans fight is just cool. You know, so that, that helps a lot. Um, but we also put those elements of there's ships flying in, there's the AI running around, there's, you know, it's, it's a more kind of engaging, believable world. And that was definitely something we were, you know, 100% shooting for. You know, and, and, and that's an interesting point. I, I mean, there, there is something, I guess believable is probably the best word to say when you're looking at these, at, at, at these massive giant mechs. But when, when you design the world, that there, there, there's clearly a logic that's, that's running underneath it. It's not far, far in the future fantasy, which, you know, is what we tend to sort of associate with, with, with mechs and stuff like that. What was kind of the philosophy behind that decision? You know, it's about being grounded in reality. It's something that while, okay, this is obviously science fiction, there's a you know, 24 foot tall mech running around. It's about, does that feel real? Does it feel like something where I can look at what's around today and see like, hey, in 20 years, in 50 years, whatever it might happen to be, I could conceive of this being real. So we want that, you know, everything is worn. It's not, you know, super shiny, you know, brand new. It's, you know, this is still, it's, it's a frontier world. So there's still this, you know, this wear and tear on things, there's, you know, it's grounded in reality. It's something that, that you, can, you can believe in without kind of breaking the, the fiction. And obviously, you know, here in, in, in previous times, what we've played are more sort of traditional multiplayer matches of, of, of the various modes. But it sounds like there's another aspect of the game that does help flesh out a lot of this world. It's, it's narrative, it's not single player, but am I right in, in, in reading it that way? Yeah, that's a good way to, to think about it. It's, you know, for us it was about how can we in a multiplayer game, bring more of this universe to the player, make them kind of engage in it, make them want to be, you know, be part of it. 
So it was bringing in those you know, the single player characters that go throughout the campaign portion. It's about you know, putting a little bit of a story into that. We're not, we're not gonna hit you over the head with it. We know you wanna get in multiplayer, you wanna play against other players, you really wanna have that experience, but why can't it be more engaging? Why can't it be more alive? Now obviously that role is usually run by the single player campaign in which there, there, there isn't in this. Is that something that you consider to be a sort of a, a challenge in, in reaching a broad audience? Um, I guess we'll see soon enough. <laughs> yeah, but, very, you know, very, very good point. For us it's about, you know, so people will play through a single player game, sometimes not at all. Sometimes, you know, they'll rush through it as quick as possible to get through the multiplayer that they spend hundreds of hours on. So you get, and, and most of the energy goes into the single player portion. So for us it was about trying to merge that and making all this great content that people work on for months and months and months and put it in where people are going to see it all the time. And it had, you know, kind of serves two purposes. For us, it's about getting that content out there, making the world more engaging. For the player, it's about being more engaged in a world that they you know, kind of believe in, they see what's going on. It, it, it's, it's a better experience. I, mean, I, I think another classic thing, we hear this a lot, I, I say it a lot, that you know, there's a young group of players who's efficacy in, in multiplayer is just so astonishing that it can make it, you know, it can be very hard. There's a barrier to entry and one of the reasons I'm excited about Titanfall is at least for maybe a week everyone's getting in on the ground floor. But have, have you guys given any consideration to how you design the game to give sort of more mid-level skilled players a chance to kind of get in there, feel like they're succeeding and want to stay with that game month after month after month? Yeah, definitely, and it's obviously a hard problem to solve, but you know, we'll start with the matchmaking and we'll put people of like skill together. And then on top of that, you know, when you're in the game, it's, you know, so you're in a Titan. Your Titan gets destroyed. You eject. You get away. Okay, now you've kind of lost, but you didn't die. So it's that feeling of, it's almost a great thing. When you can escape and get away, you almost feel a little bit victorious. So it's that, that gameplay loop tends to be a little bit longer. It's not, you know, spawn, die, spawn, die, spawn, die. It's... It, it tends to go a little bit longer, and it feels more engaging, and it feels more fun, even for lower-level players. I mean, I have to ask you because that, I mean that sounds really appealing to me. And I mean, do you think that this is kind of an essential change that not just for the in the case of Titanfall, but other multiplayer games really need to kind of be cognizant of to just maintain that big audience and to evolve over time? You know, I think it depends on the type of game and what you're going for. I mean, for us, it was it was something that we strove to hit, so it was important for us. Um, I, 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 I hate to kind of add any extra pressure to you, but you know, <laughs> Titanfall is kind of in a position of being like kind of the first signature game of the next generation. Obviously, there will be versions that'll be on the Xbox 360 and also be on the PC. But it, but it, it, it's, it's starting to have that allure to it. Um, do, would, would, would you agree that this is helping define what the next maybe 10 years of gaming is going to be like? Is that something that that that, that you want to kind of shy away from? It's a lot of pressure there. I don't know if I <laughs> I want know. That, uh, that much pressure on us. I mean, for us, it really is just about making something new, making it fun. It's not, you know, we're not setting out to say, like, this is what everybody has to do for the next 10 years. You know, to me, it's about in the gaming industry as a whole, you know, that, that change, doing things, different, doing things different than us. Don't just copy what we did because it might be fun. Do something different. Do something on top of it. Do something completely, you know, the other direction. And let's see where we can go and get the most fun out there that we can. So. Well, um, I'm obviously very excited to play this game, and if this game could have that effect of changing the conversation when it comes to multiplayer, I cannot thank you enough. Vince, no. thank you for your time. Always a pleasure, Adam. All right, with that, we'd like to take a moment and thank our sponsor, lynda.com. They're an online learning company with more than 77,000 video tutorials that teach software, creative, and business skills. You can learn anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace with courses in web design, 3D and animation, design, programming, and many more, with new courses being added every week. Membership starts at $25 per month, but you can try lynda.com for free for seven days and support Rev3 Games by signing up at lynda.com slash Rev3Games.